This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So we've gone through and spoken about what appears within your financial statements for those different types of reporting entity when they are preparing their financial statements. Now we're going to go through and look at the definitions, the elements of those financial statements. So remember within that last session there, the, what we had is the financial statements consisted of the assets, the liabilities, the income and the expenses. So the question that we then ask is, well, what's an asset? What's a liability? What's income and what's an expense? Well, this is where the framework then comes in because by providing these baseline definitions, we can then go through into the actual accounting standards and apply these baseline definitions in more detail with regards to are we going to record an asset? Are we going to record the liability? And how does that fit into that particular accounting standard? So what you need to go through and do is you need to learn the definitions. They have changed ever so slightly since maybe when you've done financial accounting. So do just be very, very careful that you've got the up to date definitions. There aren't anything major that's changed. I think we spoke about the changes in the very first video. The changes have come in with regard to the assets uh, and is it the, the liabilities. And if we're looking at the specific changes, we're looking the, about the change and it's now a present economic resource. And also there is a transfer of an economic resource within your liabilities. Okay. Uh, so, what have we got? Uh, so, with regard to your assets, it's a pre present economic resource that we control as a result of a past event. Okay. So, what do we mean by a present economic resource? Okay. Uh, previously, it just said it was a resource controlled uh, as a result of a past event for your assets. But now, what you've got there is they've added in present economic resource. So, if you're thinking about a resource, an economic resource, you think about financial resources. Okay, so you've got financial income coming in from that asset. So if you've got an investment, that's an economic resource. You're going to get financial income coming in through the receipt of dividends or interest. Uh, if you own PPE, you're going to get some economic resources coming in there by the fact that you're going to use that asset and it's going to then generate profit into the future. Uh, but the reason why they've added in that word economic is because it's not just about financial resources these days. There could effectively be some social, some environmental benefit as well that comes from that particular asset. So we need to encompass that as the world develops and the world changes. So now it's a present economic resource uh, as opposed to what we had previously. Uh, it says controlled. So that's meaning there that you can direct how that asset is utilized or you can prevent others from using that asset. And the past events is literally something has happened, i.e. there's been an exchange of a contract. Uh, there's been, if you like, a, a, a verbal agreement that has then therefore meant that you can now go through and meet that definition of the asset. Uh, so your assets, we know property, plant, equipment, investments, inventories, receivables, cash, you can apply them all there to that particular scenario. And that's what I think you're more likely to see within a multiple choice question within the financial reporting syllabus. It's more about the application of that definition as opposed to the rote learning of that definition. Uh, with your liabilities, what do we have there? Again, the definition is that you have a present obligation as a result of a past event that gives you a transfer of economic resource. Previously, it was a present obligation as a result of a past event that gives you an outflow of economic benefit. Okay, uh, so here you've got a transfer of an economic resource. And again, the focus effectively there is that there is a transfer of a financial resource. So there is some form of, of payment or maybe transfer of an other asset. Okay, again, the present obligation, something must exist now. And again, it's arisen as a result of a past event. So your typical credit sale, uh, or so I should say a credit purchase, give rise to a payable and that payable is a liability, isn't it? There is a present obligation because you owe the money. The past event is when you entered into the purchase initially. And then the transfer of the economic resource is the fact that you will be paying cash at some point in the future. Okay. Uh, equity.
equity, very simple. Uh, it's just a residual interest. It's just a balancing figure, isn't it? The difference between the assets less the liability. What I always find quite interesting in there is that when you think about the equity section, we think about ownership because that's what the shareholders own, isn't it? They own the share capital. Uh, they own the retained earnings. They own those other components of equity, such as share premium, revaluation reserves. But within our definition here, there's actually no definition of ownership. And that hasn't been incorporated still within the current framework as it stands. It's just a residual balancing figure of the difference between the assets and the liabilities. But it makes sense, really, because if you've got your assets and a definition, you've got your liabilities as a definition, then you don't need any complex definition of your equity, do we? Uh, income. So what have we got there? Income, by definition, is an increase in an asset. So therefore, if you have a credit sale, you've gone through there, haven't we? And recognize the increase in the asset. The other side of the entry is income, isn't it? It's credit to revenue, debit receivables, credit sales. Uh, if you've then got the, is it your reduction in your liability? That reduction in liability also leads to your income. So if you have deferred income, uh, deferred income is a credit balance because you receive the cash today. Uh, you are not going to go through and perform the service until some point in the future. So you can't recognize that income until the service is provided. So you recognize deferred income. When you reduce that deferred income balance, you are reducing the liability. So that reduction in your liability is your income. Okay. There we go. So you increase in an asset. Effectively think about your credit sale. Uh, your reduction in liability is effectively the release of your deferred income. Okay, uh, could also apply as well, not just to IFRS 15 and your revenue, but also as well uh, your, your government grants. But we'll touch those in more detail at a later point. And then your expense is a reduction in an asset. So if you think about the, is it your prepayment? You've set up that prepayment. You've recognized a debit entry that you then release in the following period. That is then a reduction in your asset, which is then an expense. Uh, an expense is also an increase in a liability. So if you've entered into a credit purchase, you have that increase in liability, which is therefore an expense, isn't it, as your purchases. But again, if you've got your accruals, again, an accrual is an expense and that is an increase in your liability, isn't it? Okay. There we go. So the key bit is to keep those baseline definition to hand so that as you go through the various accounting standards, you can relate back to them and start to begin to apply them within that specific standard. Like I said, I think the examinability is more around the application than the pure knowledge of those definitions. So it's important that you have those definitions to be able to apply them going forward. OK, they will stick with you, not just for financial reporting, but also strategic business reporting at some point in the future.